Ken Allison with IDI. I wanted to formally introduce our basement blanket video. IDI is in the business of laminating insulation and creating basement blanket and metal building insulation. It is a great product and a lot of people use it. Big shout out to Foothills in Colorado. You're gonna see them on the video. They helped us do this. Most of it was filmed on an iPhone. So I wanted to give you just a little more formal introduction. As part of that, I wanted to say, you know, obviously it's a great product that's been successful for many years, but you're gonna see some good installs and some mediocre installs out there. By good installs, I mean it can be very pretty. I want to stress that on the video, the one we're installing does not have a vapor barrier, and really that's probably what I would use in most of the United States. I prefer for the concrete to dry to the inside, or to, for the walls to dry to the inside, where we have conditioning. Pretty tough to drive moisture out through your basement wall to the outside. However, for those that prefer to use it, we do also make it with a vapor barrier. Now the most common is typically going to be four foot wide by 50 foot long. If you think about it, if we made it much longer than that, you might not be able to get it down the stairs. So uh, three inches to six inches thick, it's going to be between R10 and R19 really this is one of those things that can set you apart when you're doing a basement for a contractor or going to someone that has a basement that's not been finished and not been insulated you can really make it beautiful the bright white facer on there lights up the room with that being said take a look at the video enjoy it any questions just give us a call Ken Allison with IDI and we are looking at basement blanket insulation today. When you look at the product itself, we have a facer on there that is reinforced. So this particular product has a paper on the back that allows for greater strength. It's not going to tear as easily so you can run your staples a little farther apart. I do want to show you some things about this. This is perforated because here where we're at, we do want the basement to dry inwards. If we had something that wasn't perforated, then it would trap moisture to the other side of it and the basement would have to dry to the outside. So this is perforated. It also has a great flame spread rating, meaning we're gonna wind up with a flame spread of about 10 to 15 on this, depending on whether we're talking the inside or the outside of the facer. It is also FM rated when we look at commercial construction. And take a look at this basement. We have 85% light reflectivity. That's gonna brighten up any space. So with that, let's go take a look at the guys doing some installation. All right, so here we have Cody and Ronnie. They're pulling the insulation down around the corner behind the sump pump and Cody's going to put a pin in right there by the window. Then he's going to do another one about four foot back there on the bottom, just low enough that it's not in the way of the joint that he's going to tape. So let's go ahead and take a look at the fasteners they're using. So we're going to take a closer look at the ram set tool used to do this. It takes a 27 caliber powder actuated shot. In this case, we're using a two and a half inch pin. You can see right here, it leaves a little bit sticking out. There's also an inch and a half pin which would go all the way in. As you can see, the guys have set one at the top and one at the bottom every few feet. According to the spec, it's supposed to be every four foot we're supposed to have a shot. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and let them start the top row and get out of their way. So as they get to the second layer of the top of the wall, you'll see Ronnie stretch it tight as Cody pins it, but when he gets to an obstruction, he simply cuts, around, cuts the facer around the obstruction and goes back to pinning as close as he can to the obstruction and then he'll pin about every eight foot. And you'll see the facer strong enough to hold that, but he is going to come back and fill in the pins between those so that it's up nice and tight and doesn't have any problems. As he goes to the wall to put those tabs together there in the middle, you'll notice he's gonna use his Boss 635 spray. He sprays it on between the tabs first and then runs his tape line. Even the same when he's got a tear in the fabric, he just does the same to the facer there. So as you watch him go down the wall, you'll notice that he details everything quite well. No, you don't have to use the Boss 635 spray, but Cody believes that the belt and suspenders method has made it where he never gets any callbacks and things work out great. Also, the builders happen to love him because he makes it beautiful. At the same time he's doing that, Ronnie's going around tucking in the top and making that look nice as well so that you get a nice finished look. 
So let's look now at the coup de grace of this entire application. That is around the window. That's where Cody excels above most of the other installers I've seen. He does a great job of detailing the window. Unfortunately, here you can see we've got some concrete to tear out and get rid of. Had to beat on that with a hammer for a little bit and then go back and scrape the window to get the rest of the concrete off. But he'll cut out a little bit of the fiberglass around the window to create another tab for himself. And then he sprays the window down with the Boss 635, goes ahead, puts a layer of tape on the window first. Then once that outer layer is done, he sprays it with the 635 again, slices his facer so that he can make that into a tab all the way around the corners, and then glues the facer down to his bottom layer of tape. Once he gets all four sides done with that, then he's going to go ahead and start on each of those corners. He's going to spray the corners with the Boss 635 and then tape into the edges of the corners for a nice finished look. As you can see, when he gets done, the window is beautiful. These are some of the best jobs I've seen in terms of basement blanket. I'm sure there's other people doing it great. Here you can see just how nice it makes a basement look when you finish the project. We also went next door and saw some jobs that just were not the same. Obviously, as you look at these pictures, the pins are sticking out pretty far. They didn't bother tucking in anything. A lot of their tape jobs were subpar at best. So, like any other install, it really depends on the quality of the content. All right, so now that we've looked at the installation, I'd like to thank again Foothills for allowing us to come out and be on their project. The other thing I wanted to talk about is this does come in different sizes. Anything from two foot to seven foot ride rolls, typically you're gonna see it in four foot or five foot. And then anything from R11 to R30, we typically stock an R15 or an R19. Again, any questions you have on this, reach out to your local rep, reach out to one of us at corporate, but do give us a call. Again, we're here to earn your business every day. I'm Ken Allison with IDI. Thanks so much for watching.